Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second day of the introductory workshop uh, Built with Bits. Um, my name is uh, Isabel Crespo. I'm the um, education specialist in Europeana uh, and the community manager of the ENA education community, as uh, Alteo explained a little bit yesterday. But let me just refresh uh, what Europeana is. Uh, we are an initiative of the European Union uh, starting in 2008 to uh, make available online uh, cultural heritage treasures uh, for uh, people to enjoy and to use and reuse uh, from different domains, creative industries, research, but of course also for education. Uh, the initiative is uh, run in cooperation with an association, but also by a foundation, which is based in the Netherlands, in, uh, in The Hague. And uh, here you can see in this beautiful uh, picture of different faces, uh, the staff member of, of Europeana. We are at around 60 people coming from uh, many different nationalities, more than 20 uh, nationalities. We are currently working online as uh, many of you, but progressively we will uh, go back to our offices in, in The Hague. So um, uh, some rules for today. Uh, please introduce, start to introduce yourself. Uh, uh, um, just say hello from where you come from. And uh, for you to know, we will record uh, the sessions uh, and make them available online because I know that some of you will join us uh, later. You can start to uh, tweet with the hashtag Europeana Education uh, from now on for any kind of update news you want to uh, share in social media. Uh, during the webinar, please, uh, we'll, we'll keep attention that uh, no mic is open, but uh, please also take care of yourself uh, during uh, the presentation of the speakers uh, to avoid these uh, background uh, uh, noises. And um, of course, if you have any question, please use the chat and we'll try to, during the sessions, uh, to give you an uh, answer or maybe uh, ask later on to the, to the speaker to, to help uh, with them. Uh, the menu for today, we, we will start with a presentation of uh, or introduction of Mozilla Hubs um, by Telia Jimenez from the Macedonia team. She will tell us a little bit more about uh, her uh, background in a second. Uh, afterwards, I'll uh, take over uh, explaining you some, uh, uh, give you some guidance on how to navigate Europeana for your project. Um, after, after my presentation, there will be a short uh, break for stretching legs, take a coffee and um, relax a bit, uh, because we know there's a lot of information uh, 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 going on. Uh, and then uh, uh, Daniel and David will uh, follow up with the second uh, part of this introduction on, on Mozilla Hubs. Uh, then uh, we'll move to Discord, explained by Daniel, and uh, we'll make a, a onboarding process, uh, something more interactive for, for you to start to get familiar with, with the tools. So to this, um, in, a kind of, in a kind of way, a little bit more interactive for you to play with the things, uh, with the tools, uh, the platforms you are going to use from, from now on. So we hope that it's a bit more relaxed uh, than yesterday uh, and uh, maybe more uh, practical uh, to start to uh, get your projects uh, in motion. So ah, and uh, at the end of the, of the program, uh, you'll have also the opportunity to meet in uh, kind of uh, private rooms. Uh, this is not gonna be recorded. And then you can introduce yourself, explain why you are joining the program. If you have any ideas that you want to share with the rest of the group and, and meet your colleagues, uh, you will do it uh, in your own language because you will be um, uh, with your facilitator, with your country facilitator. So this is a, a nice time uh, for ice uh, breaking. So with no further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Thelia. So please Thelia. Uh, um, thank you for coming all virtually. <laughs> I'm Celia Jiménez Rompinelli, and here is my background, some of my CV. I was working like 11 years in the design field, um, in consultancies, in many clients, uh, in education, technology, food, entertainment, banks, all the kind of <laughs> clients that you can imagine. And also in, in Pegasus Bank, I was in Greece because I know that there are many Greeks here. And uh, I did a, a lot of consultancy. I was in startups and now I'm working as a freelancer. 
and I used a big, uh, media and communication degree and a master in 3D art for video games. And also I'm specialized in XR, extended reality, like uh, virtual and augmented reality. And um, what I am, my title is digital product designer, UX UI, and maybe you can you cannot know what is that. So I will try to explain. Um, I think that I'm a designer, that I'm a person that I plan the form or a structure or something before it is made by preparing drawings or plans. In practice, anyone who creates tangible, tangible or intangible objects, products, processes, games, graphics, services, or experiences. So maybe you heard before the graphic designer, web designer, fashion designer, industrial, game, interior, architectural, or user experience and user interface designer. That this is what I am. I think that I'm more in this field. And now I will explain you a little bit what is the difference between UX and UI designer. The user experience designer consider the, the why, what, and how of a product in a specific context. For example, okay, they do websites, applications, or sometimes services, but focusing more on the why, what, and how. They, they consider the user motivations, the values, the views of every person, their functionality, and the features. Also, the accessibility. And um, normally, in the normal days, they use data, they do or conduct user research, and finally, they do white games, but they will show you what is that. <laughs> These are some deliverables that they do normally. For example, in the left is a sitemap that is like the skeleton of a website. Uh, you can see that is in the beginning is the home, the products, the card, the account with the profile of the user. And um, it's all in its schema, like um, all in its screen and what uh, inside they have features. And in the, in the right part, you can see the, a wireframe. How could be a, a normal wireframe that is normally black, black and white, and you can see the main features of the, the website. For example, in the top left, you have the logo type, the logo, the search bar, you have a hero or carousel in the, in the main part of the website. And here are some icons, an image, text, this is a, a low fidelity uh, wireframe, and also you can improve this wireframe and do it uh, with the, the final texts or titles or this kind of, of stuff. And now, what is a user interface designer UI? They work in the interfaces normally in the screens to transfer the, the brand's strengths and visual assets to a product interface, making sure that the design is consistent, coherent and um, they focus more in the emotional part to do all visually. And the user, the user interface designers, they finally they think in the typography, the layouts, the white spaces, colors, iconography, buttons, and also between the two, normally they work together. And for example, it's very normal to, to think in the responsive design, that this means that when you do a website, for example, you need to think if they will, the final user will see it from the tablet or will see it from a, a normal PC or in the mobile phone. Also, maybe they will watch it in virtual reality. And now I will show you some deliverables. For example, is when the screen is finished, they, they use the, the image, they use this, this iconography to go to the back or to download the image or these buttons in the in the bottom and also some some of them they have uh, illustration skills and they do icons or for example 3d yeah there are some examples and finally what we have in all our experiences is the look the feel and the usability i i told you this is in, in general but uh, there are many 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 parts inside and <laughs> It's a, we do a lot of things. And me, I consider myself that I'm a designer that I do these two parts, from the user research until the end, to the final deliverable. And when you have, for example, in this case, in this example, a website, also you should uh, think in the animation and how will be the, all the experience for the user. And how we do this, I, I will explain you a little bit 
what is the design thinking that is a way of thinking and it's an iterative process in which we seek to understand the user the final user that we use this we have uh, sometimes a challenge at the beginning and um, we have a challenge assumptions um, to identify alternative strategies and solutions that might not be in the beginning. For example, you have a problem and then we try to solve this problem at the beginning, we have this challenge, and then we do in some phases that the, the design thinking has. Every, every phase has a different uh, way, ways of thinking. I will show you later. And this is, this is the whole process, okay? From the start to the solution delivery. In the beginning, you start with the empathy, empathy and research part that is to, to understand the problem that you are trying to solve, typically through user research. Maybe you, you heard sometimes the, the interviews that uh, you can do sometimes to your, to your friends and family, and another times the interviews that uh, you pay to, the, to some users with a specific profile, and you ask them some questions. Or, for example, the shadowing is another method that uh, you can be near the, the person, for example, a person that is working, and you can be all the time observing this person and understand what he's doing to, to try to solve the problem. Then the next phase is to define. That is um, combine all the research that you took from the last phase and observe where your users' problems exist. This is more like in the context, like defining the, the, pro, the problem that they have. And uh, you can start thinking the opportunities that uh, maybe will, will have uh, some innovation or some ideas, you can start here a little to, to think on that. But you, you should uh, take a lot the, the research part and read all what your users said and study, study this, this uh, kind of cues that they said, quotes. And um, sometimes a specific exercises that we do is the uh, pains and games to understand the needs and the, the desire or the wishes of the people and the personas, that um, you, you take a person and you think in a specific persona, you put a name, for example, um, Charlie with um, 30, 31 years old that lives in, in Spain and they do this, this. And you, you try to think all the time more in the users. And then when you are in the middle of this process, you should uh, redefine this this first challenge that you have. And you take all the exercises that you did in the beginning and you redefine this. I will show you an example later because now maybe this could be a little abstract to you if you never did it before. And then here, here is a moment that you can start to ideate, ideate to do ideation. And it's more important to have a lot of ideas than, quali than quality ideas. Is quantity is better than quality in this case. And there are many, many uh, exercises like brainstorming that may be some of the most famous. The crazy eight is uh, a thing that in Google Springs they use it is uh, you put like a paper, you divide it in eight portions and you have one minute to every idea and you try to, to do a lot of crazy ideas. That is called the crazy eight. And then you put all in common with the other people and try to, to have more ideas, begin with the other ideas that they other have. And the storyboard is uh, also to think uh, more in specifically in what a user will do in, in each part, something like this. If you want to, you can search more and, and understand how is this exercise. And finally, you, you have a prototype uh, sometimes we say MVP, man, minimum viable product, and you can start to test it with the people, with the final users that you think that they will use that. And you filter the ideas, how will be the implementation, so you speak maybe for the final developers, how they will do this, or if it's something about, for example, a supermarket, you can start to ask in the supermarkets how they do the process, or in the context that you will use it. And the most important part is that because you need to test it all the time and adapt it again to the, to the last phases and have the user feedback. That this is very important. Also. So as you see in the whole, the whole process, you start in the beginning 
from a divergent part where you don't know anything and you need to, to start observing and understanding the problem. And this is a process that is very big. And then in these double diamonds, the problems start to, to convert, to convert in a, in a place more small. And this is when, when you redefine this process. In the beginning, it's a problem space. And finally, you, you use a solution space. When you are thinking more in concrete, completely with what will happen or what you will design or what you will implement. And the, the important thing of design thinking that is uh, very nice is that it's not a linear process. You can jump, skip from a place to another. Maybe you are in the ideation phase and you need to start again and see the, the research or what the user said. Or you are prototyping and testing and you start again and you define again the, the thing because it's, it's a way of thinking that we use a lot and you can, you can use all the phases at the same time. It's better to, to start from the beginning, but you can jump again to the last or, or do the, the prototype and testing, for example, from the beginning. If you, the, the more that you think, the better the solution will be. And I, I think, I did a, a little example to, uh, to explain you better. Imagine that you have a client. This is, could be a, a normal task for us. And the client tell us, okay, we want to improve our website and do our website more immersive. How we can do that? And then we, and then we, we need to start to think. At the beginning, we, we should, empathy with this client and with the final users that will use the solution and say, okay, uh, what are your users trying to do? They go to the website and they try to, how, how they use the website, for example, in the beginning. Why do they say immersive? How we can do that? Why, why we need to do this? Um, what's hard for them? What, what is happening now with the, for example, accessibility in the websites? They use the mouse, they use the keyboard, uh, they, they are three seconds in the website or they, they spend more time in this website. And then you pass to the next phase, that is the fine. What is the most high impact problem for users? So for these users that will use this website, what is the most important part that they will need? What are the wishes and the pains that they will have? And then again, here, when normally we do it in groups, in design processes, here we can start to redefine this process. And it's like, okay, now we have, for example, a research that is a weeks of working on that. And some users say that, um, okay, they want immersive websites, but they don't have virtual reality headsets, for example. Okay, so let's re redefine the challenge and let's try to do now a solution to be the websites more immersive, but without the VR headset, for example. This could be, it's an example, fiction example. <laughs> and, and then you start to evaluate again. You start to ideate, to do ideas. And does this fix the problem, what we are doing? And start to work and do the MVP, the final why things or the final website to test it with the users. Um, then you can do some questions like this. Do all users understand this? This is uh, easy to them to use it, or this is solving the problem that they had in the beginning, is immersive. And that is why, for example, I, I, told the, I told you this example, because this could be the challenge that Mozilla Hubs have. The, this company, Mozilla, did this solution to do the websites more immersive and without the VR headset. And what is that? Is, I will tell you a little introduction. It's an open source project where people can meet, share, and collaborate in 3D virtual spaces. How? Creating or joining rooms, choosing or uploading avatars. You can create your own avatar in other websites and import it here, or uh, sharing content that you want from your PC. And for what you can use these Mozilla Hubs? To host a conference, to teach a class, showcase art, or just hang out with your friends. And these are the main features that the, this uh, product that they did, the hubs, uh, have now, right now. 
this uh, communication by texting, you can chat, and also they have uh, the voice. You can turn on the microphone and, and speak. And they have a spatial audio. This means that the, when the other users are far farther than you, are in a big distance, long distance, you don't hear them. But when they are close to you, you hear them better. So this makes a natural way of communication that we have in the real life. That is why it's also more immersive. And you don't need to download anything. It's only with a browser. And uh, they have the virtual reality option, but also if it's accessible from any device. So you can use the tablet, the, the phone to, to use it. So this make it, makes it more access, accessible for all the users, kind of users. And it's easy to share content, it's very easy. You can take media from internet, for example, an image, and you can copy and paste a URL, a link, or you can upload files from your computer. And also is uh, for, you can hang out with your friends or do or enter to uh, public spaces that they are doing uh, an event, for example. You can share PDF files, images in 360 or normal images, drawings, videos, audio, 3D models, interactive text. You can share your face, your webcam, and um, you can share your screen. And now I took some screenshots to show you a little how, from a design perspective, from a product designer, could be this. Imagine that, the, okay, we do this product, and now we, did, we need to do the wireframe of how will be the login screen. And then we start to think, okay, so let's put a button to join the room, to enter from the device, or to be a spectator or uh, to not uh, be active in the, in the experience because maybe you are shy and you don't want it. So it's covering a lot of uh, fields for the users. Um, here you can set up your avatar, upload it, change it. And for example, in my case, the most of the times I work with inputs fields, thinking how will be the errors, uh, if the user does a mistake, what will happen with the button, if you can continue or not, how you can say to this user uh, that uh, is doing something wrong. And here, for example, is the, you, can, you have a search bar that you can search an avatar. And also you can have here some tabs, SketchUp, uh, scenes, avatars, GIFs, and many options. So we think in every option, how will be the scroll? How are these buttons? Um, how will be, this image, for example, here is cut, but here you can see the, the wall avatar. Um, the close, the close button, button will be in the left or will be in the right. And when you enter to the experience, during the experience, how will be the scene? How you will speak with the user? You will put texts to, to the user to explain him how will be the experience, how to for example, we call it sometimes this the onboarding, the onboarding process when the first user starts to use a product. And here, when you click on something, you need to think in the in the button. How will be the colors when you are clicking? For example, here it was green, and here is white. And the options, how to to put them in the space, the colors, all this. And here is a little example of the when when you use a three D object. The loading, when because for uh, the performance, you need to wait a little bit. So you have a 3D model loading, then the 3D model appears. And also, when you are clicking or you are you are doing the focusing or hover near the, the object with the with the gaze with the mouse, this changes the color. So this is also design. You need to think how will appear everything. And here is another example when you have a 3D object. And um, these are some buttons that uh, you can select and what they do every, every button. I will tell you because maybe you will use it later. <laughs> so it's, for example, now it's the fox here. You have a button to rotate it. You can duplicate it with this button. You can delete it or you can open links. Sometimes you can go to another website or do another things. Resize it or move it in the space. And also we do the designers, we do a lot of documentation, these kind of things, 
to the developers because they need to implement it and we need to, to communicate very well to them how will be the speed. And also here is a, a long menu that they have. And inside the, inside the experience, there is also the onboarding process and they are telling you how to move in the space. I, I put this highlighted, highlighted the community because it's very important, as I told you in this process, to have in the final the testing and the feedback from the users. So in this case, in Mozilla Hubs, they, are, uh, they have a community to ask for the users what they think, if they should change something, and then the, the team of Mozilla Hubs will have this again, another challenge, for example. Uh, because, uh, for example, a, a user would say, um, I don't know how to move. Uh, I'm trying to use this key, these keys, and I don't know how to move in the space. Or I don't know how to go upstairs, for example. Elia, sorry, sorry for yeah. interrupting you, uh, but uh, it's the sound sounds a bit uh, patchy. I was uh, wondering if maybe without the headphones, could improve this or if this is gonna be a problem for you otherwise we keep it this way because it's okay. good enough but uh, just to see if we can improve it okay sorry for that uh, i will finish so don't worry i i okay then I it. It, it, it's only this the the final slide that is uh, telling you that, that it's okay not, uh, when you deliver a solution it's not the final you need again to go back and continue improving it testing it with the users and redesigning again or and that's all i'm sorry for the technical problems <laughs> no that's that's uh that's okay it happens uh always something uh to all of us uh, one maybe way or another the so. bluetooth maybe it's the bluetooth of the headset ah uh, you never know you never know but it was fantastic <laughs> elia thank you very much um, thank you very much to you uh, I don't know if anybody wants to ask something. We have uh, one minute before to jump uh, into the next session. Otherwise, uh, just uh, place uh, as yesterday, place your questions uh, in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, here we have Veronica. I don't know if you can read it, Telia, but she's asking, what's yes. the biggest challenge in Mozilla Hubs? A good one. From the, <laughs> I don't know because I don't work there. I, I would like it, but <laughs> but this is the biggest challenge. Uh, I think that the challenge that as a user, I think a challenge that they have now is this to try to to put to the to the people the virtual reality glasses when they will be cheaper and uh, how they will use the experience with the virtual reality classes. Because now they are focusing more in the website, but in the future, I think that they will have uh, to manage this from virtual reality and from the websites in a, in a good way, because now they have a little problems of performance. When there are like 20 or 30 people in the same room and they start putting 3D models and all this, uh, they need to improve these things, maybe as user. But I don't know, because I'm only one user. So when you will use it uh, these days, the next days, you can maybe say to Mozilla Hubs what you think and they can improve the product. And I think Emma also um, as in the classroom in the reality, makes students pay attention during the activities. Good. Sometimes this happens because when you are immersive in a, in a place, you see more the visual, the visual part than the audio. So it's difficult sometimes to, to the students, for example, to, to focus, and you need to guide them very well in these uh, kind of experiences. Isabel. Yes. Isabel, if I can, uh, yes, I want to uh, thank you um, to Veronica. I want to say that uh, um, Veronica asked uh, what's the main problem. It's the same problem you have the reality uh, to keep the attention of the students uh, focused on what you are, you are doing. But uh, compared with Zoom or other uh, um, virtual uh, lessons uh, tools is better because the audio is uh, real uh, um, as in the, um, they are in the same uh, place, uh, in the same uh, place together. So it's different from Zoom when the people and students speak uh, uh, one over the other. The audio is like uh, in a real room. Uh, so you can hear also the person that is close to you in uh, Mozilla. And this is a very good thing to make the attentions of the students uh, 
focused on uh, the lesson instead of Zoom or Google Meeting or other platforms. So thank you, Emma. She's uh, our Italian facilitator, so follow her advice because she knows uh, what she's uh, talking about. So thank you very much for clarifying uh, this uh, aspect from, 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 from the students because you have uh, completely the experience. So I'm gonna start my session because uh, let's, uh, it's an intensive uh, program today again. So what I'm gonna ask you, Daniel or David, is keep a track of my time because when I share the screen, I won't be able to see anything else. Uh, so just uh, don't be shy. Don't just uh, shout okay. and look, that's, uh, you, you need to finish. Okay, so let's move uh, to Europeana platform. So um, important, uh, uh, well, this, this session that we are starting now is focused on um, uh, help you to navigate uh, Europeana.eu platform to find the content that you need for your project. Uh, import, this is going to be the mantra and the facilitators, they are going to repeat this uh, uh, many, many times uh, in order to make your projects uh, eligible, uh, but also uh, that we can exhibit them online uh, for you and your students, we need that you use uh, open license content. Okay? Um, then I'm going to show you today how in one quick, uh, there's going to be a learning pill. Uh, where you are going to understand the, different, the differences between the open licenses uh, available because we have Creative Commons, different type of licenses and public domain. But uh, with Europeana, you will see how in one click you'll get hundreds and thousands of uh, materials uh, without having to know in detail what license uh, really means. So don't worry about that, it's going to be easy. Uh, Europeana is an, a live uh, platform. Uh, we are constantly ingesting and updating the content. So it's a, like a live entity. Uh, and in there we are, we, ha we currently have more than 60 million objects and more than 20 uh, have this uh, kind of licenses. Uh, so don't worry, there's plenty to choose and, uh, and, uh, and to include in your projects. Uh, before starting to surf uh, uh, the platform, um, as, uh, as we have all this amount of uh, content coming from thousands of institutions all over Europe in many different formats and in many different languages, uh, sometimes it's a bit challenging to find what you are exactly looking for. Uh, uh, looking for. Uh, you have to be a bit indulgent because that's that's a part of the, uh, the, the magic of, of the platform that uh, there's a lot of content that sometimes it's difficult to surface it and make it accessible and visible for you. But I will give you some tricks and uh, I will guide you uh, to the different tracks and paths that you can follow uh, to get a nice material for, for your projects. Um, because we don't have a huge amount of uh, nice 3D content, uh, we will allow you, uh, and it's going to be explained later on, the use of other platforms like the Ethnicsonians or Sketchfab, but always again with open licenses uh, to uh, complement uh, your projects. So um, another thing, let me just go over the, the important points, um, language. Uh, again, Due to the huge amount of content, uh, millions, uh, we can you, you can you have to understand that it's not feasible to translate uh, all these materials and the metadata attached to these millions of objects to the 27 official languages of the European Union. So what we can offer for now, we are working on uh, multi, in, um, automatic translation, but and artificial intelligence. But this is a long journey. That's a, a long uh, way ahead for Europeana be able to provide. Uh, um, uh, an efficient and a proper translation of, of the materials. But what we can offer for now for you and your students, if you scroll down the homepage, is uh, uh, the, the possibility of translate uh, to, your, uh, to your languages. We have the, the European official languages. Uh, translated, but just the headings and some uh, um, uh, functionalities. Eh? That this might be uh, interesting for you and your students. Uh, it facilitates the students' access to, to the platform. Eh? But you can see here that there's uh, some parts and some cards uh, are also translated, but not all the content in European, as you can imagine. 
In any case, we have meta, we have content from thousands of institutions, so from uh, institutions in your respective countries. So with meta, you, you will be able also to find uh, items in metadata in Greek, in Spanish, Italian, and uh, Portuguese. So uh, let me uh, close this. Um, so let's start to, uh, well, this is the homepage. In the homepage, normally we uh, highlight uh, the content, uh, new content that is aggregated or uh, new editorial uh, materials. In Europeana, we offer millions of objects, what we call it uh, raw material, but we also, uh, we work intensively in daily basis to offer you um, editorial content in the form of blogs, exhibitions, or galleries. This helps to um, give context to the collections that we receive from many different countries, but also to surface hidden stories, uh, things uh, that you will be surprised um, uh, to discover, and new narratives. Eh? So you have these uh, different ways of looking for content via the, uh, what we call it, discovery trip to, to the search uh, bar here, uh, and we'll see it in a, in a minute, introducing a, a, key, uh, a keyword uh, for your search. But also you have the opportunity to uh, take some shortcuts, let's say, via the, sorry, I'm gonna move to English again for everybody to uh, clearly understand. Uh, you will also have uh, the way you will uh, be able to find content via the stories, the narratives, these blogs, galleries, and exhibitions that I just mentioned, or also through um, uh, organized collections. Eh? In order to improve the experience of uh, uh, going through all these millions of objects, we have organized um, our collections by topics, big topics. So let's start with the discovery trip uh, with the search bar functionality that is always at the top of the of the page, and I'm gonna start looking for uh, uh, the, the search of my preference. I want to create. Uh, I want to start to look for content related with the sea. So the first thing that you will see is always this uh, uh, page uh, result. The page results. Um, and you have more than 140,000 uh, items. Uh, that's a lot, yeah, as you can see, and you will have to go page by page and, uh, and look for, for uh, what you uh, are looking for. That's, that's uh, uh, to narrow down your search, we have uh, provided you with a, uh, um, filter uh, with filter options, you can uh, narrow down your search by collections. Yeah, these uh, organized collections that uh, I just mentioned, and we'll see later on. You can uh, narrow down by type of media. In that uh, case, I'm going to choose image and uh, 3D, and I'm going to apply it because these are the kind of images that I'll probably use for my project. Uh, the number has reduced considerably, but still quite high. So let's let's give it a try um, uh, with new filters. And this one is key. This is the one that I was uh, telling you about. Uh, that um, can I use this? Uh, this means can I use this for creative reuse? Yeah, it can uh, is uh, mainly addressed to find uh, open license content. If you say yes, you will get already 47,000 items with this uh, Creative Commons and public domain um, licenses that allows you to download, copy paste, uh, modify the, the image and the file and use it in a, uh, make something new out of this item. For this project, for other context, uh, uh, it would be arguably, and we will talk about for different options, but for this project, please always yes, eh? and you will have all the material available for you. So we are starting to get uh, closer to the results we are, we are looking for, and you can go on, uh, narrow down. In that case, uh, you can maybe choose a country. Uh, your country to get uh, content from, from your own uh, uh, institutions. But in my case, because I know that in the United Kingdom, there are uh, specific collections that I like a lot, like the British Library or the Welcome Collection, I'm gonna use uh, United Kingdom. Um, it's 12,000, still a lot, but uh, getting nice images already, the things that I'm, I'm really uh, pursuing. So I'm gonna go for more sophisticated filters. Uh, you can still choose by language. Mm, and uh, if you choose something different, probably the options will be uh, extended, there will be more. Um, and then aggregator institution. Uh, this is not especially relevant for you, but I'm gonna uh, explain you the difference. Um, 
uh, Europeana cannot work directly with thousands of institutions all over Europe, as you can imagine. So we work with aggregators. Aggregators are um, inst institutions that uh, they work at national level to collect, to aggregate, to ingest this data uh, in Europeana. So, and we have at around 40 different institutions, mostly at national level, but it can be also at, um, at uh, uh, Potopic, but okay. Uh, in your case, also maybe it's more interesting via institutions. It's up to you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna choose the welcome collection. You can also narrow down by color if this is something that might be interesting for you and useful for your project. You can choose the image orientation, landscape or portrait, and also the quality of the image can be also relevant. File format, and then uh, I'm gonna apply what I already have. Four hundred. That's much more manageable to scan all the content and see uh, the materials that I got uh, that are quite interesting uh, already. And also if I go page by page, I can uh, make a more efficient uh, search. Let's open uh, one of the of the images to see how an item page looks like. They always they all uh, look uh, more or less the same. You can um, zoom in. Yeah, to see nice details of the image or zoom out. Yeah, that's a nice functionality for you to use and, uh, and see the details. You will also get, again, the um, copyright statement, the license, the specific license. Uh, you'll get more details about that. This is Creative uh, uh, Commons by, but not, not need to go in, uh, in depth uh, to this today. Uh, you can download and this is interesting for you, very interesting, because it's a new functionality that we have now. And let me explain you why. Uh, all the items uh, that you use uh, for your projects need to be credited. Uh, with the facilitators and with uh, Daniel and David, you will uh, find out a way of making uh, this in an efficient way. So don't worry, we'll uh, touch uh, on that later on. But um, now this was different before, now you can just copy and paste this information. These are the title, uh, the author, uh, the institution, the providing institution, the license, and the link uh, to this item. You have to collect this information. You can uh, uh, put it in a Google Doc or in a Word Doc and uh, keep it. Eh? When you select an item, this is, um, uh, this is for moral rights. Uh, all the items need to be credited. Eh? So even if this people is not aware of, but this is even if you get info, uh, pictures from YouTube or from uh, Google, you should have done this uh, uh, when you use it uh, for uh, your projects. But of course, nobody's gonna check this, but Europeana is, uh, is really uh, compelled to, to do it. And uh, you need to be aware of that. So let's close it. Um, a new functionality also for you and your students uh, interesting for start to collect uh, and to engage with the content in an interactive way uh, uh, via our platform. Now we are um, we are facilitated the creation of uh, collections and galleries. Eh? Uh, you have to first um, sign in in the platform. The process is really, really easy. I mean, we hardly ask personal questions. It's basically uh, to identify your account. And if your students are upper secondary, uh, older than 30 years, this is a great way of involving them in the search of content for your project. Yeah? It's very easy. You'll get an email in your uh, inbox. Uh, you just have to confirm, and then you'll have uh, access, and you will have created um, an account uh, on Europeana. So now I can start to collect, uh, I can start to like it, um, uh, the item, but I can start to collect to create a gallery. How do you create a gallery? Very easy. Uh, this uh, pop-up will appear. So you have just to say, I want to create a gallery and I want to use the name and the description that uh, I find it uh, more interesting to keep it in mind uh, and to keep it under control. And you can decide if you want it uh, private or public. Um, uh, you don't have to make it public. Uh, I'm for now keeping everything private because I'm still developing uh, or the selection of, of, uh, of the items I want to use. Uh, uh, in the moment that you make it public, um, uh, this means that it's public for the uh, European staff members and they can make it public on the homepage for the rest of users. But, that's up to you, no, no need for that. So you create the gallery, 
and you have it uh, ready. Uh, in my case, I already started to collect uh, items, so I just have to uh, add it uh, to my uh, uh, current uh, um, gallery, and let's see what we have in there. I go back to my profile, public galleries, nothing in there, and private galleries, you can see here what I already have. Yeah. So here you have all the content and uh, recommended items. This is really nice because then again, with just one click, you can just uh, add content to the gallery that you have uh, created. Uh, in the case uh, here again, important in the case that by this is an easy one to see, but if you are sometimes uh, depending the term, the keyword that you are using, you won't get uh, the results or the nice images that you are expecting. So try with different language versions or with synonyms. Yeah? Don't um, uh, don't uh, give up. So try uh, with different uh, ways of uh, searching. Bolayan search uh, are also uh, available, so this can uh, help uh, with your with your um, with your uh, project. Uh, so let me go back to the homepage. This was the discovery trip, uh, looking for the millions of objects uh, in the Europeana platform, but we have organized our collections uh, in. Uh, topics, big topics uh, that uh, you can see here. So if you click one of them, you'll get uh, the same uh, kind of display, the same uh, interface uh, that we've just seen, just that then now we've uh, immediately narrowed down uh, the amount of content, but you can start again to search uh, via the uh, search bar. Yeah, and you have you will find again the same uh, filter options to uh, uh, to uh, be more precise and target uh, uh, a video search. Um, there are many topics. Let me go back to the collections. There are uh, you, you you you'll be able to display uh, many 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 of them. So this is a, a good way. Uh, but uh, as in previously mentioned, we have the stories. Uh, this is um, uh, um, can give you inspiration also for the narrative of your of your projects to find some uh, topics, some uh, some of these um, nice uh, New European Bauhaus concepts. Uh, you can maybe uh, get uh, ideas from from these stories. Uh, in this page, uh, now uh, we have highlighted uh, different um, narrative stories that we were uh, lacking in Europeana. For instance, we didn't have, and we still don't have much uh, uh, materials on Islamic heritage. So now we are trying to highlight uh, the collections in, in relation to, to this, um, uh, uh, to this uh, topic. Uh, also plants and animals, uh, paintings from the 20th century. This is a bit more complicated to find content from the 20th centuries, 21 because of copyright uh, uh, issues, as you can imagine. But we are uh, slowly and progressively uh, filling uh, our collections with more materials. Um, here you have uh, the different- Isabel, you have five minutes left. Okay, Just so I, I will go very, very, uh, thank you very much. So um, you will be able to search for exhibitions and blogs. I'm just gonna open a quickly uh, exhibitions. These are big uh, uh, narratives uh, divided in different uh, chapters. Here, uh, I wanted just to open quickly a century of technology. This is a, a very uh, successful uh, exhibition we released uh, recently. Um, also, you have, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you have a feedback uh, uh, button here in case you find some bugs or you need support, you can, you can use this uh, button. Uh, but uh, another way of collecting images is through, the, is through the exhibitions because you will always find this icon here that it will bring you back to the uh, individual item. And you can again, start to collect uh, for your galleries uh, this material. Yeah, so it's uh, it's sometimes also um, helpful uh, to to give a little tour to the uh, stories, uh, exhibitions, and galleries we have. The blogs is simply uh, a shorter uh, format, 300, 500 um, words normally, and again uh, illustrated with images, sometimes even videos. You will find in the recent exhibitions and blogs a lot of videos. Um, and uh, let me find uh, just one of them. Uh, okay, 
this is about multilingual uh, uh, teaching in, in Europe. So uh, this is one of the example of the videos you can find. Eh? And again, with the same um, uh, 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 rationality behind. So um, I think I've covered uh, the main uh, uh, path tracks that you can follow. You have an, uh, an hamburger, hamburger menu here where you'll uh, see an additional uh, piece of um, or section in Europeana. This is, uh, uh, we call it Teacher's Corner, Europeana Classroom, where you will find learning scenarios, uh, um, lesson plans that our network of ambassadors and user group uh, are developing since uh, a few years ago. But uh, what I wanted to show you here is that we've created a new European uh, Bauhaus uh, landing page eh, with a lot of blogs, uh, exhibitions that can start to give you ideas eh, about the topics you want to you wanna tackle. And again, uh, some of the images that you'll find there and in open license. Eh? I don't, I'm not saying that all the content in these blogs and exhibitions are in uh, open licenses, but we try to use a lot of uh, this kind of uh, content eh, for again, to, to, uh, to facilitate the reuse of these materials. Yeah. And finally, just, uh, and then I'll finish. Uh, if this wasn't uh, enough, it's, it's been uh, too fast maybe to explain all the possibilities, you will always have this help section. Uh, that will give you again uh, a lot of uh, tips and uh, recommendations and ways of uh, browsing uh, Europeana uh, platform eh, to find the content that that you that you need eh, with the filter options eh. and also there's an specification the Bolean search and at the end of the bottom there's a, a specification about the different uh, licenses that uh, are available in the Europeana platform so. Uh, let's leave it here. Um, let me stop sharing. And if you have any question, I don't know if we still have uh, some uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, C1. Is it possible to apply a filter in order to search for ancient images only? Uh, the, this, this is a good one. Um, Search by date is a very difficult uh, task that we are uh, trying uh, to uh, solve. Uh, but now in the homepage, we have, uh, like we call it feature centuries. So you can uh, go through centuries. This is our one classification we, we were able to manage. But the date, uh, it's, it's a difficult one because we have date of creation, date of the um, uh, of the author, date uh, of where this uh, item was placed in the providing institution. So we have many different kind of formats for dates provided by, again, by thousands of institutions. And this is something that, um, yeah, this is something that uh, it's a bit uh, tricky. So let's try with the centuries in the home page if you are looking for all the materials. Uh, but uh, that's that's uh, one of the things that we are trying to, to solve in, in the future. Welcome back. Uh, now we'll start with the second part of the, the introduction on uh, Mozilla Hubs uh, by Daniel and David. So the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you, Isabel, and welcome everyone again. I'm going to share the screen. Perfect. So it's uh, three at ten, and here we have, uh, I guess, the, the the funniest part of of this afternoon because we are. Uh, going to make a, a demo uh, with Mozilla Hubs for all of you that haven't been there before and for all of you that, that want to, to come again just to, to make a little test. But first, uh, I'm going to explain a little more uh, along with the, the tips and the, the things that have uh, that Celia have said before. I'm going to complement that with with some information, more practical information, maybe I'm more focused in, in the program and the things that we're going to do during during these months. So uh, first of all, and um, before getting to the, the space, um, you are going to feel lost. And this is something that I want to tell you, the first of all, 
because this is an experiment that we, that we wanted to make in just as I said here here in the in the square. Uh, it's nice for you to remember this moment because then you will be able to compare it with the moment uh, maybe in, in two months or in, in three months uh, and just to see the, the progression here because uh, everyone when you just have a new technology uh, and this is related with, the, with what I was explaining yesterday about the, the cultural and the technological mediation when someone uh, use a new technology and always feel lost. So uh, it's normal to uh, not to know uh, where to click or, or how to move or, or what to do exactly. But uh, this program is about that. So so we want to, to teach you little by little. But today was, we, we wanted to introduce this uh, just in a, in a, a bit hard way. So so it's nice for you to, to be there at the first. But um, some things also to to remind about the the program. Uh, well, I'm going to to explain first the, the controls and, and some technical tips uh, along with this information. So um, to to frame what what uh, this experience is going to uh, it's going to be about. Uh, we're going to enter into this room, a room like this, uh, this is a very colorful room in, actually, that we have created a dog for, for this uh, program or for, for this workshop. Uh, we're going to get into the room, all of us, or all of us that want to, to get uh, into, uh, that, uh, that is the coordinators, the facilitators, and the participating teachers uh, are the people that we are here together in, in this uh, Zoom session. Uh, the, the plan here is that we are going to keep the, the Zoom open, and David, uh, my, my peer, uh, is going to broadcast by sharing the, the screen into the Zoom. So uh, if some of you um, don't want to enter or just want first to, to take a look, uh, you can like watch the TV about what's going inside, uh, but you have the possibility to enter in the moment you want. So it's like a, a, double, a double play here. Uh, and uh, inside the space, uh, and you will see it later, we have created like some different areas uh, with th uh, three floors and, and some of some corners with the national flag. So, so if, if you are from the country you are, you can move uh, to the to the flag, and then this is uh, this is thought just so you can talk with people from your own country and in your own language if you want, and with your facilitator. But you are of course uh, able to to speak with you know, uh, whoever you want into the space, of course. Some tips here uh, to move. We can use the uh, the keyboard. I think it's the better way to to move with the direction arrows. Here, the, this uh, option is the easier. I guess it's the, the more in, in, intuitive way to move in uh, through the space. But also there is another way that is uh, with the with these keys, uh, the A, S, D, and W. Because this is the the way some video games work. So um, maybe if you are used to, to some video games, uh, you recognize these these keys. But I, I suppose, but for the general uh, audience, is more comfortable to use the arrows because it's more intu intuitive. Um, and when you press the the up arrow, you move forward. When you uh, click the the down the, the down button arrow, you move. Uh, backwards and then you can move uh, right and left with the, the other keys and also you have the possibility to rotate your your head in, in the space uh, with the with the left click in the, the or in the left button in the mouse if you have a mouse uh, if you don't have a mouse uh, you can also make this movement this this rotation with the q and, and e keys in the in the keyboard. So this is something that you have to learn little by little, as I said before. Don't worry if you feel, again, a, a, a bit lost at first. The first thing I recommend you to do is just move without thinking about uh, rotating the head or, or making 
maybe some complex movements, but the first one is it's to, to know where you are, uh, to see the environment, to see other people, and then to start moving little by little and adding uh, steps in this in this process. You can also use your smartphone to to move into the space. You can open the, the link that we are going to share with you in your mobile phone or in your tablet or in other device. And then the, the all the controls are tactile, so you can uh, pinch, out, pinch in and pinch out to to move to make the the steps through the space, and also you can uh, touch the screen to rotate and and and, and pin the the head there in the into the into the environment. Uh, any question you have related with this, uh, as I said, we have the Zoom open, so uh, you can write uh, to us uh, any any problem you have with the controls, and we will be there, uh, David and I, to to as well, whatever, whatever you want. Then uh, another thing that is important, and Emma has uh, told about this before, mm, we have audio inside the space, but it's not the, the audio that we are used to, to, to use or, or, or to, to experiment in our day-by-day -day meetings in Zoom and this kind of tools, because it, it's an spatial audio. And the meaning of this is that uh, you have to be near someone uh, to hear him or or, or hear her, uh, because um, uh, the space it's like a, a real space just in the virtual world. And, and then if you are talking with someone, you have to be near that person. And if you get far from that person, then you are going to be listening uh, to that audio like uh, it, with uh, with less uh, volume. So it's very, very interesting how, does, how that works. And, and I think that you, you have to get into, into the space again to, to test it in, in the best way. And then um, oh, another difference from this, uh, um, uh, from, from a real space is that it's not going to, uh, anything is there just for you to touch it and it's not going to break. So you can handle uh, every object there. So there, are, there will be some interactive objects. Uh, you can grab something and, and throw it to the to the wall. It, you have to try. You have to to experiment, and you have to to lose the the fear and, uh, to to touch in and to to grab everything you want because it's not like a real room or a museum when you have to to walk like with, with some fear about touching something that you are not able to or, or whatever and there are we also uh, there is a, a chat in the low bar there in the in the screen in the inside mozilla have uh, that, and this would be like uh, like the chat in zoom with a different that you write there and then the, the message appear and in some seconds uh, it will disappear. So it's like an instant chat, just if someone wants to say hello or, or to say something, whatever, but the, the real conversation is going to take place into the, the Zoom app. So the first step uh, when entering Mozilla Hub is, uh, as Celia has said, uh, you have to uh, choose your avatar, but first you will have to click on this button uh, this is a, like the main screen into hubs, and you will uh, you will have to click in, in the blue button to uh, get into the, this other screen that is the, the avatar setup. And then and you can write, and, and you should write your name here because uh, you are going to look like this. Uh, uh, maybe it's some difficult for, for us to, to identify everyone if you are looking like a panda. Uh, then so you you can write here your name and then if you want okay, you, you can change your avatar here uh, through the gallery that is inside the, the software but uh, this is something that we're going to see during the program so uh, you can choose the the predefined avatar and then click in in accept in the green button uh, and uh, depending on the device maybe you are asked for per per permissions for activating the, the mic and the camera you you don't need to use the camera inside the space, so so that's okay uh, because we ha we are working with the cameras here in Zoom and, and it's not something really necessary. But you have to open the mic if you want to to talk, obviously. Uh, and uh, just to to say this uh, also, uh, the best browsers to work uh, with Mozilla are Firefox because this is a Mozilla Hubs 
uh, Mozilla Hubs is a, a Mozilla as Firefox uh, uh, from the same company, everything. And uh, Google Chrome also works uh, pretty well. So these are some screenshots about what, what we are, you are going to, to find there in the space. Uh, if you see like a, a, an object or, or a strange thing, then you can move your, your mouse uh, over that uh, object. And then probably there will be like some controls like, like Celia have some as well some controls to interact with that object. Maybe if it's a video, then you will have the option to, to play and, and, and plus this, this volume controls. If there's an object that you can grab it and, and throw it, if there's a PDF, you can uh, pass through the pages. And if there's another room, another portal to, to a room, you can click and go to, to that other room. But it's something that we are not to, to do because maybe you, you will uh, get lost uh, uh, really uh, through, the, through the spaces. And just uh, some final advices, uh, just like a, a, like a conductual thing about uh, how are we going to, to be in, in not regarding the technical part, but regarding the, the personal and the, and the dynamic itself. Uh, first, uh, as I said, we're going to try to dominate first the walking through the space with, with, with the keys in, in the keyboard. Then uh, if you want to tell, obviously you have to, to have your mic open. Uh, but if you are in a noisy place, then you have to, to uh, have it closed until you are going to, to talk because if not, the, their noise is going to enter the room and, and everyone is going to, to hear it just like a call. If you had headphones, this is better for the experience uh, because it's like more immersive. Uh, also, as I said, uh, you don't have to uh, to be afraid. That's anything. And if your experience in in some in any time it freezes or, or your boxes uh, crashes, this is something sometimes normal, and it depends on, on the 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 characteristics of your of your PC, of your device, your mobile, or, or whatever. So some advices here is first to to close any other tab that you have open except the Zoom, uh, and you, but you have to close. Or oh, it's uh, very advisable to close your your camera in the Zoom and, and and the mic so it doesn't interfere with the with the Mozilla. Um, and if you have other things open, then it would be better to, to liberate some space. And also if you have a, a better device or a better mobile phone or, or whatever, it, it will always work uh, better in, in a better device. And if there's no way for you to, to make it work, just come back to Zoom. Then we are setting the, the screen so you can watch uh, how it works. And then we will talk to you later before starting the program in this first onboarding week. So, so we can uh, study a bit your case if there's something with the, 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 with the configuration of your browser or if something specific from your device. Um, but don't worry about that because everything will work in, in the end. Uh, and it's normal sometimes to, to have maybe a, a missing configuration in, in some devices uh, and, and we'll figure it out. And in Zoom, uh, don't close it. Uh, there will be the screen again. Uh, everyone will move the, the mics at Zoom. Uh, and these are things that I've already told, so there are no problems here. Uh, and we will, back, we will be back here in 30 minutes. Uh, right, Isabel, it's, uh, can you tell me? Oh, okay, it's until uh, five to four here in, in, in my time. Yes. So uh, we'll have like 30 minutes to make this experiment and then we will come back to, to Zoom to explain the last part of the, of the session. So I'm going to stop sharing, right? Uh, and David, if you have the, the, th the, the link, I'm going to read the chat first, if you have any problem here. Yeah, there's a small uh, okay. question of Jenny. Yeah, in general, does it take a lot of space on the device? Regarding the device about the space. Sorry, I'm sure there is a more accurate way of asking this. We don't know. It, it, it's mm, there are like not a specific limitation uh, because sometimes um, my, my, for example, my my PC is like a tablet with a keyboard and it's not very powerful. And sometimes uh, it goes like very fast. Uh, and sometimes uh, it it it, uh, it doesn't. 
So um, I think that there are like some things here that are the your internet connection, the the characteristic of, of your device, the um, the things that you have opened in your in your computer or in your device, and the, if there are other processes running uh, at the same time, and also the complexity of the room and the number of people that are into the room. Uh, the normally we are like only some 10 20 30 uh, people in the room and should not be any problem and we are now like 22 so i guess it will work well but maybe if you are like 100 uh, people there you have like like to make another different configuration in the room to allow more people and to optimize optimize the the resources and we will talk about that uh, during the program so but this is something that that is uh, important to to explain Thank you for, for the question, Jenny. And also, just uh, as David has uh, shared the link, uh, you are watching here the, the screen, uh, and you can make like this introduction, David, clicking on doing rooms, so you are going to to see how it works. Then in, in the in the low in, in the bottom left part of the screen, you are watching here, uh, Luija, Northern Pintal, uh, Makoa. These are like generic names. You will change those names. Elena, for example, they are just uh, coming into the space, uh, and this is like what you are going to to see in in the um, in the right part. You have like uh, people, and twelve people are now in the room. So, David, if you want, you can enter the room so that they can watch you, and you can walk. David is is like a camera. You can see it in the in this screen, uh, but he's like a floating video camera. And then uh, this is the, the look from, of, of yourselves. And then I'm going to uh, mute myself here and get into the space as well, just for you to, to meet me. OK, everyone has to come back to the Zoom. David? Check if everyone is leaving the room. There are still 11 people there. Okay. 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 But it seems that they are not talking anymore. So I guess that you are all here again. How was it? The first experience. Okay, here, uh, addictive. <laughs> Here, uh, it was made uh, pretendingly like this, like freestyle. And, and even, uh, even I told you before some technical advices. You, ha you have been watching in your, in your, own, in your own way the, the different problems, the different mm, uh, positive points, the, the different uh, kind of experience that you have lived into the space because uh, for example, and I'm going to open again the my presentation, because for example, sometimes there are li like echoes, and, and this happens when someone uh, has the the mic open, or, or if someone uh, has the, the mic open without uh, headphones, and then the audio start like making a rebound between the the two devices, and this is something that happens sometimes, and, and other times uh, it doesn't happen. And also, for example, you can see how the, the distribution of the space can actually uh, affect to the way the conversations are held. Because, uh, for example, Italian, you were all in your area. So all the Italian audio uh, came from here. And, and, and then the Greek people were in the, in the other floor. And then the two conversations uh, did the interface with each other. So this is something that is related uh, with the design of the space and the different strategies that you have to manage to, to create some some space uh, where everything uh, can happen at the same time. And also, for example, here, uh, and this is other thing that we are going to talk about, you have different kind of permissions. And, and in this case, you, you were allowed, I think, to make uh, almost everything. So you were, taking, uh, you were taking selfies, and you were grabbing the objects, and you were uh, painting in the walls. But all these things can be uh, banned for different users. So you, you, um, if you want to have like a clear experience with everyone mute and everyone like following you or listening to you only, 
but then you can open these uh, permissions so so you can create like a, a sandbox with all kind of experiences that it has been the, the case and don't worry again if you have been lost or if you have had some kind of, of, of misunderstood or, or or problem with the with the movement because uh, we are start working uh, for the first um, for the uh, from the first from from scratch uh, with the program and all these things uh, are the, the technical parts that we are going to to uh, talk about in the learning fields. So uh, this is the first uh, part of our experience here, and now uh, I'm sharing again the screen. No. Okay, now? Yes. Yes, that is, perfect. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. No, I was telling that, that uh, I'm not going to talk only about the, the, the tool itself, uh, uh, but about the way we have created the, the channels to, to use during the program. So, uh, as I said uh, also yesterday, the score for those who, who didn't attend yesterday, this is a channel-based platform and it's similar to other uh, other chat uh, platforms like Telegram, Slack, or Teams, with the difference that it mixes. For on the one hand, the the chat messages, the, the chat conversations, and then uh, on the other hand, the video or voices conversation. So you have the, the two of them mixed together in in the same in the same bar. Uh, there is a link for you to make them board. When we to share it in, in a bit, just when, when I finish this explanation. And we have also made some screenshots that, sorry, because they are in Spanish, but uh, we are, uh, uh, we have translated them in the tutorial that we're going to share with you as well. So the first thing that you're going to see when we share this link is a, a screen like this with a, a black box uh, with a colorful background. And then you will have to write your name and click on, on continue in the, in the blue button. And then it will ask you uh, to sign up to create a, an account. This is not mandatory, actually, but it's something that we recommend a lot because uh, you can use this score uh, without creating the account, but it's like a guest mode uh, where you can talk and you can write like everyone else. But I think that uh, it's like a preset to, to rate uh, in some days or, or I don't know if it allows you to use all the, the functionalities. So I think it's better to create the, the account and, and you have it uh, for, for other occasions. And it's free and, and it's very easy to use. So, so uh, you can follow these steps that are the, the normal steps when creating a new account. This is something that we're going to do in, in a minute. Um, uh, clicking on, I'm hey, I'm a new man. And then uh, putting your birthday uh, in, the, in this screen. And then uh, this is the screen that I, that I say that if you click the, the cross in the corner, then it, it will close and you will be there without finishing the, the process. Like if you let, uh, uh, if you write uh, an email and a password, then you will have the, the account to use uh, whenever you want. And then you will arrive at this screen that is like the main interface uh, from this core. And I'm not uh, watching that I have here. Okay, better now, it is bigger. Uh, and then when you came uh, to into this screen, you will have here in the left part, a bar with the different channels. The ones, uh, I don't know if you see it uh, properly, but then you will see later anyway, the one with a, like a hashtag. The, these are the, the channels for, for the chat, for the normal chat, the, the, the written chat, the written chat, sorry. And then if you uh, see like a speaker, th these are the, the voice chats. So they are in the bottom part of the screen. Then you will have this main big area uh, to write like Telegram, like uh, WhatsApp and, and all these kind of, of uh, platforms. And now in the right part, you will see how many people are in that channel, in that specific channel where you are in, in that moment. And the list of, of persons, uh, of, of people to interact with. And for example, uh, and again, you will have a tutorial, don't worry about uh, learning everything right now, but uh, you will have like different roles uh, for, for everyone will have a different role regarding if you are a coordinator, a facilitator, a teacher, uh, then afterwards a, a student, a guest uh, into the space or uh, even 
to distinguish if you are from uh, each country. So uh, you will uh, play with these tags. So uh, depending on the tags that you have, you will have access to different channels. And for example, here again in this screen, uh, you can read it uh, nice right now, but there are like an Italy channel, a, a Portugal channel. So uh, when we put that tag, then you will be automatically inside the channel from your country. And then uh, you will have some... One some second, Daniel. Uh, yeah. Because people is asking what this core uh, is for. So maybe you can explain uh, how this tool can help them uh, during the training and to engage with the different participants. Uh, give a little bit more detail about that. Okay, perfect. Uh, this core is uh, the tool that I'm going to come back to this uh, slide. Uh, this core is the, the tool that we're going to use uh, for the entire program regarding to the com internal communication. That is the communication between the facilitators and the coordinators uh, with you, all the teachers. Uh, do all the teachers are going to get into the space and uh, we're planning to let you invite some of the students. Uh, we have to talk individually with uh, every teacher first to, to know how many students do you, do you really need uh, in your project to be in all the conversations because I suppose you have another channels uh, normally. Uh, but you will have the, the possibility to to, the, to do this invitation also for your students, and uh, we will celebrate here also the the learning pills and the mentoring sessions. Uh, specifically, the learning pills are, are going to take place here, and this is something that, that, that is planned like this. But the mentoring session, uh, as it's something that you can do uh, whenever you want with your with your facilitator maybe you want to make a phone call it's okay and you don't have to write everything here but it, it's like the central platform where we are going to share different uh, news and announcements and and also for everyone to share resources and, and whatever you want to share and, and talk with with the other people here okay and, uh, and so Okay, there are no more questions so far, I guess. Uh, okay, is it really or not yet? Yeah, it, is it, it's really, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to make this tutorial first and then we are going to enter in the space. And, but this is something that I'm going to, to talk in, in a minute when I finish this, this explanation. So uh, as I said before, we have here the possibilities also to change your avatar to uh, customize your description, to tell about you, like in other platforms, this is not the most important thing here, but it's nice if you put your photo just uh, and your name, just for everyone to recognize you. And then this is what I was talking about. Uh, these are the, the hashtag uh, channels that are, uh, for example, the general channel is the one that you are going to, to arrive first when you enter the, the platform. And then you will have some different channels that are this, this, these six channels are like the main channels what everyone has access to. Uh, and then we have the, the countries channel. And then in some days we'll create the, the project channels. So you have a, a, a private channel with your facilitator and with your students to talk about your project in, uh, specifically. And these are just uh, to talk in your, in your own language. And also uh, here in this button that you will see in the in the upper part of the screen, uh, if you click here, you will have the, the possibility also to talk uh, privately with uh, anyone. Uh, this is also that you can also uh, make if you click on the face or in the name of someone, and then uh, it will pop up a, a screen like this, uh, a windows like this, like this, and then you will have the possibility to write a message here in this in this box if you want to to connect with someone or to share something or, or whatever you need. And just to sum up this explanation, uh, the channel voice, the, the, the voice channels, sorry, uh, are these ones. And we have, um, um, by this moment, we have only one uh, for every country and one for, for general meetings. That is the one that we are going to, to use to talk in English. Uh, and if you are in, if you want to join a channel, you, you just have to click on the name and then your name will appear here. Uh, under the below the, the name of the channel and then you will know that you are uh, you are connected and if you want to disconnect from the channel then you will have to click on this uh, phone with a cross uh, icon uh, that uh, appears in the below these uh, these names uh, and also you will have uh, every other zoom software or, or 
alike. You will have the, the mic uh, icon, the headphones for the sound, and, and also a configuration uh, setting icons if you want to change anything in the, in the regarding with the technical part and also to to share the screen to share the video this is like a other video call uh, application so uh, i'm going to come back into the chat okay there are no more questions so uh, all these that i have tell uh, i have told mm, uh, you will have this video to, to check it if you want but uh, i think that the best part here is to read it uh, in english so uh, we have created a tutorial with all these screenshots and explanation uh, step by step of, about what you have to do when entering the space uh, and when using the space. So for for all these and uh, as I as I explained yesterday, uh, we have created the, the library corner that we have called it like that. That is like just all all in one page with all the information regarding not only the score but uh, all the information that you need to to uh, master the the program. And this is another link that we are going to share with you. We will share it in this course. So, so this is uh, something that you can check later. Uh, and you will get into this uh, page with, with the main information of the, of the workshop and about the program. With the, in this case, specifically, we have here the, the tutorial for the onboarding and the Discord tool. We will have some uh, Creative Commons resources, and we can add uh, more of them. We have the calendar with the program, the, the information of every link of every video recorded afterwards we will have the the learning fields with the date and also the, the contact information for your facilitator if you want to talk to them by mail or, or whatever you need so uh, explain it uh, all of this we are going to to make the the official onboarding to the score and this is the, the final slide actually in, in my presentation because the plan here and um, it's that that we are going to First, we're going to share this link. David is going to share it. Uh, you will have to make this process about the, the registering part that I uh, told you be, uh, before. And then you will get into the score. But we are going to uh, to Zoom, or to close Zoom, or, or at least to, to mute Zoom if, if someone gets lost in the in the process in the meanwhile. But uh, the, the plan here is to, to make like a, a translation from the Zoom into the, the score. So uh, we will start different conversations in the channel, in the voice channels. Uh, everyone can join the, the particular uh, country channel or, or can join the general channel, but we'll try to follow the conversation here and make some networking just uh, so you can hear again the, the, the voices from your language and, and to share just a, a, a final thoughts about what we have learned uh, in these two days and, and how the plan is going to be. Don't worry about mm, two things. Uh, don't worry if when you enter and uh, you don't see your national channel, because this is something that we have to uh, make uh, by hand, one by one. It's very easy and very fast, but we have to be uh, to, to be ready to, to add you to the channels. And it's very quickly. And um, if we made everything to uh, this afternoon, uh, better, but uh, maybe if you, if some of you can enter today and you enter tomorrow, uh, until we don't uh, get into the space, you will only have access to the main channels, and you will, you won't have access to the national channel until we make that that role assignment. And also, uh, don't worry uh, if you uh, feel like there is uh, some missing information uh, so far, because uh, on Monday we will start this um, onboarding. Uh, through the platform and we will share the, the tutorial, we will share these videos, we will share more information that we think that uh, may be useful, we will invite all the people remaining uh, and we will make this uh, along these days. So, so uh, take into account that it's not everything uh, instant but uh, everything that you need as well you can ask uh, to David uh, or to Ido, uh, to me, to Isabel or to every facilitator. So. Uh, we can help you as far as, uh, as we can to, to make the onboarding the, the more pleasant possible. So everything has been explained so far, and I think that we are ready to make this official uh, onboarding. Uh, I don't know that there's anything else. Okay. Um, I think no. Okay. So, David, you can share the link and let the program begin. Official. I'm going to stop sharing. I don't know if you want to add something, Isabel, or something that I have missed in this clinician. No, 
No, I think uh, all is clear, but I see that there's some um, some questions around the username uh, and uh, so Antonio Maria is asking what's, uh, if I understand okay. correctly, what's the difference between username and tag? So, but I don't... I no, mean, no, 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 okay. sorry, not, not that. that. <laughs> I only want to, okay, to, to know the link to our group in this call. I have a, already an account. Ah, okay, so now is what uh, David is preparing for all of you. So he's uh, gonna send the, the links. Uh, Perfect. 